Hello guys, Wim here, back with another video. And in this video, I want to talk to you guys about macro libraries. So first of all, I think it is important that you understand what a macro is. So I'm going to show you a use case of a, of a typical macro, uh, or well, basically I'm gonna show you how you can create a macro. So you can do a macro in, a, in any type of a blueprint class. Um, so a typical one is a player controller. So let's go inside of a player controller class and take a look at how macros are created. So um, as some of you guys know, uh, we, we can also make functions in our engine. Well, basically it all starts with, you can make custom events and these events, you can name something like do it. Uh, and then you can have your logic run off of these events and then you can call these events, right? So you can do, do it and do it calls the event. Uh, well, if these events, um, uh, if you reuse it multiple times, you could also collapse these two functions so that you don't have to have them here in your event graph and so that you can reuse that functionality. You can do that here on the left. Uh, some of you might be familiar with that. And then inside of functions, you can basically code functionality. But one thing that you cannot do in functions is you cannot type a delay node. So the delo delay node will not pop up. And that is because a function is a one-time task. It's basically functionality it executes and then it returns so once you click this you can have it have a return so it executes logic in between here and then it returns a done basically uh, and that's all it does so it's one time events and then in functions some of you notice you can have local variables and these local variables are only used during the time of the function executing uh, and after that they are basically purged and then once the function is called again you can uh, you, you will have those variables will be reset essentially uh, but then how is a function limited? Well, as I said, you cannot use delay nodes there and they have, uh, yeah, that, that's a huge limitation for certain type of logic. So um, because of that, some people then use a custom event because then you end up in the event graph and inside of the event graph, as you guys know, you can call delay nodes and then you can have delay logic. So what's a typical use case for this, for example? Well, let's say that you're inside of the player controller and you wanna get yourself the player state. Uh, so this one, then on begin play, your player state may not be fair, valid yet because maybe your player controller initialized and your player state did not yet. So uh, then typically what you do is that you would type is valid on begin play uh, and then you would validate it. You can also do the modern way, right click, convert to valid. And then in the case that it would not be valid, you would then basically call a delay node here, right? So you would do delay uh, and then you would just validate it again to make sure that something is valid. Well, um, that you cannot do inside of a nice function that you would call validate player state, for example. So then validating the player state would actually end up here inside of your uh, uh, event graph or inside of some here attached to some type of custom event. Uh, so in that scenario, you can also use the third uh, option. So not an event or a function, but a macro. And you can make those over here on the left. So if we were to make this macro, and if we called it player state, for example, or sorry, uh, validate player state as an example, then this macro needs to check if the player state is valid or not. Uh, and inside of here, we can click on the inputs and create the first input. And then we see the first big difference as well. Inside of, an, uh, of a macro, we can actually click on an execution pin here and we can make multiple of these actually. So we can have multiple execution pins. And then if you go back to your viewport, so if we find our event graph, I mean, if we go back to our event graph, we can then drag in this macro and we can have multiple entries. Not only can we have multiple execution entries, but we can also have multiple um, execution outputs. So just like this. So what could you do here different than in, uh, in a function? Well, this already, for example, you cannot do that in a function. So as you see, a function can only have inputs of variable types, but not execution pins. So the most a function could return is that uh, it could return some type of uh, some type of, uh, of a variable here, such as uh, uh, is it true or not? So if we pull this one, it just has one pin in and it will say true or not. Well, in this case of a macro, you could say, I don't want the variable true or not. I basically just want to actually directly return true or false 
Uh, and look, now I don't have to put the branch here because I can put that branch logic inside of here and just directly return it a true or false. So that's something about a macro. Uh, and then another big up about the macro is that you can have delay nodes in there. So in here, we can actually make delay nodes. So if we were to uh, validate the player state with this one, so let's call this execution pin in, uh, then we could simply fetch the player state over here. We could then validate it. And in the case that this is not valid you could now run a delay node inside of here and then say okay it's valid and after a certain amount of tries you could then eventually return it as invalid so this is just an example of course this is not actual functionality this but you understand what the point is here um, so now you see that there is a little clock on here and i use these myself here as well um, and that's way more valuable that this than uh, than some uh, functionality of what a function can offer you. But then the downside of macros is that inside of a macro we cannot have local variables. So if you are working with something like an array and you need to sort that array, let's say a leaderboard or some example like that, you cannot easily do that inside of a macro because you would have to make variables that are here inside of the actual. Um, inside of the actual class. So these are variables that are continuously referenced inside of memory, essentially, if this class is in existence. Um, and that's a downside, because then when you are calling this function, you're gonna have to reset these variables if it's functionality such as sorting a leaderboard, for example. So that's a downside of using macros, but the clock here, the delay node is an upside. Um, then, now that we understand what macros are and how we can use these, then we can take a look at something called a macro library. And that is super useful. In my previous video, um, you, can go, you guys can go check it out. I explained what function libraries are, but in this video, we're talking about macro libraries. So essentially what you can do when coding in Unreal Engine is you can obviously code functions and macros on a per class basis. Uh, and then you can have that class and make a child class out of it. Um, but then it, it would still only be basically uh, inside of those classes. And if you are not working with child classes, but just completely different player controllers, for example, then you're going to have to copy paste your macros over here and there. And you want to prevent that because you want to spend the least amount of work with the most amount of profit, obviously. So um, for this scenario, we have macro libraries. And uh, without some of you knowing, you've actually already always been using these. So if you want to validate, uh, something for example you can type is valid question mark right and then we get this uh, this event here let's see i can't seem to find it here is valid and this is great so this is actually already a macro uh, another famous macro that you might not know that you've been using is the sequence this is a macro the branch is a macro and a for each loop is a macro so if you double click these you can actually see that it guides you to standard macros which are available inside of the engine and this is what ue4 developed developers or UE5 developers uh, pre-made for you guys. So you have already been using macros all along and you can see that there's a whole bunch of macros in here that you might be familiar with, a do once, a flip flop, etc. So these libraries, you can also create for yourself to make additional logic. Uh, and something that I do here that I will make a separate video about as well is I have my own macro library for, play, for the player controller type. So if we take a look at that, uh, you see that I have a macro library folder and then I have a BML, which stands for blueprint macro library underscore player controller. Now, the way that you create one of these is that you have to do it on the per class basis. So unlike the function library, which can be used in any class structure whole project, macros are on a per class basis, but they are still easier than coding it in a specific class. So the way to get one is to right click to go over here to the blueprint category. And over here, you see blueprint macro library. Now, when you click them, you get the option to pick a parent class. So that's what I mean with per class basis. So in case you want a macro library for a user widget, so for widgets, essentially, you can simply type user widget, click it, and it will create you a macro library for that class type. As you see in this actual game, uh, I have one for the character for the game mode for the game instance player controller and widget class uh, and inside of this one for the player controller i got myself a couple nice macros that do handy functionality so uh, that back to that player state example right here i got a beautiful macro that instead of typing player state and i'm making a separate video on this topic uh, and i right clicking and on then delaying it like this and plugging it back in here 
I basically, uh, inside of the macro library for the player controller, made a function called validate player state. And instead of doing this risky logic as if it's always gonna return or not valid and you're gonna keep delaying, I made myself a beautiful macro here that has a timeout on it. So it will try for 10 seconds and then it will either say validated or filled. But actually more specifically, it will try for 10 seconds if it keeps failing, but it can also instantly get validated of course. So if we take a look at that function here real quick, we see we have a standard timeout period of 10 seconds. We're gonna try to cast to a class. It might immediately succeed. So that, that means basically validate. But if it fails, we're gonna try try for 10 times and then uh, eventually uh, we're going to say it filled if it filled and if it is validated we also pass a nice reference to this game state in this case that i'm trying to cast to uh, and then as you see right now i can right click anywhere and i can type that name so i can type validate player state and there pops up my custom macro from the custom macro library now this is very useful uh, for this type of scenario but also for example inside of widgets so some of you might have to validate stuff inside of widgets uh, and then you can actually use a macro library for that. So what do I use here? Well, a, a reference to my game instance, for example, here we go, or uh, validating whether or not we are logged in uh, to a platform called PlayFub. So I validate things this way. So um, yeah, guys, that's it for macros and how they are useful and how you can use them and macro libraries on top of that so that you can make the most out of macros directly from the get-go when you're starting out with programming in Unreal Engine. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you did. Uh, comment down below what if you have any questions perhaps and the uh, users will always help you out here and so will I try to do that. Um, also, please check out our Patreon. Link is in the description. Would greatly appreciate it if you support us there. We also have a very nice series going on for multiplayer uh, on our channel. And um, I have a, a file for that project that you can download on our Patreon with cool examples of multiplayer. And also please check out our Kegdot Marketplace. And we sell very cool games and example templates there that you can use or build on top of. These are all of the highest quality with very good blueprint logic going on in them so if you're looking to learn more about our engine or just looking to expand your game with some more functionality then please check out these assets that we make all right guys i appreciate you and i'll see you in the next video bye bye